Hello, online pipe community, Ethan Parsimonious Piper. And here, once again, I am with Potter Piper. And we are diving right into the 20th screw tape letter from C.S. Lewis. Potter Piper, take it away. My dear Wormwood, I note with great displeasure that the enemy has, for the time being, put a forcible end to your direct attacks on the patient's chastity. You ought to have known that he always does in the end, and you ought to have stopped before you reached that stage. For as things are, your man has now discovered the dangerous truth that these attacks don't last forever. Consequently, you cannot use again what is, after all, our best weapon, the belief of ignorant humans that there is no hope of getting rid of us except by yielding. I suppose you've tried persuading him that chastity is unhealthy. I haven't yet got a report from you on a young woman in the neighborhood. I should like it at once, for if we can't use his sexuality to make him unchaste, we must try to use it for the promotion of a desirable marriage. In the meantime, I should like to give you some hint about the type of woman, I mean the physical type, which he should be encouraged to fall in love with if falling in love is the best we can manage. In a rough and ready way, of course, this question is decided for us by spirits far deeper down in the lower archy than you and I. It is the business of these great masters to produce in every age a general misdirection of what may be called sexual taste. This they do by working through the small circle of popular artists, dressmakers, actresses, and advertisers who determine the fashionable type. The aim is to guide each sex away from those members of the other with whom spiritually helpful, happy, and fertile marriages are most likely. Thus we have now for many centuries triumphed over nature to the extent of making certain secondary characteristics of the male, such as the beard, disagreeable to nearly all the females. And there is more in that than you might suppose. As regards the male taste, we have varied a good deal. At one time, we have directed it to the statuesque and art aristocratic type of beauty, mixing men's vanity with their desires and encouraging the race to breed chiefly from the most arrogant and prodigal women. At another, we have selected an exa exaggeratedly fe feminine type, faint and languishing, so that folly and cowardice and all the general falseness and littleness of mind which go with them shall be at a premium. At present, we are on the opposite tack. The age of jazz has succeeded the age of the waltz, and we now teach men to like women whose bodies are scarcely dis distinguishable from those of boys. Since this is a kind of beauty even more transitory than most, we thus aggravate the female's chronic horror of growing old with many excellent results and render her less willing and less able to bear children. And that is not all. We have engineered a great increase in the license which society allows to the representation of the apparent nude not the real nude, in art and its exposition at the stage or the bathing beach. It is all a fake, of course. The figures in the popular art are falsely drawn. The real women in bathing suits or tights are actually pinched in and propped up to make them appear firmer and more slender and more boyish than nature allows a full-grown woman to be. Yet at the same time, the modern world is taught to believe that it is being frank and healthy in getting back to nature. As a result, we are more and more directing the desires of men to something which does not exist, making the role of the eye in sexuality more and more important, at the same time making its demands more and more impossible. What follows you can easily forecast. That is the general strategy of the moment. But inside that framework, you will still find it possible to encourage your patient's desires in one of two directions. You will find, if you look carefully into any human's heart, 
that he is haunted by at least two imaginary women, a terrestrial and an infernal Venus. And that his desire differs qualitatively according to its object. There is one type for which his desire is such as to be naturally amenable to the enemy, readily mixed with charity, readily obedient to marriage, colored all through with that golden light of reverence and naturalness, which we detest. There is another type which he desires brutally and desires to desire brutally, a type best used to draw him away from marriage altogether, but which, even within marriage, he would tend to treat as a slave, an idol, or an accomplice. His love for the first might involve what the enemy calls evil, but only accidentally. The man would wish that she was not someone else's wife and be sorry that he could not love her lawfully. But in the second type, the felt evil is what he wants. It is that tang in the flavor which he is after. In the face, it is the visible animality or sulkiness or craft or cruelty which he likes and in the body, something quite different from what he ordinary, ordinarily calls beauty something he may even in a sane hour describe as ugliness, but which by our art can be made to play on the raw nerve of his private obsession. The real use of the infernal Venus is no doubt as prostitute or mistress, but if your man is a Christian, and if he has been well-trained in nonsense about irresistible and all excusing love, he can often be induced to marry her. And that is very well worth bringing about. You will have failed as regards fortification and solitary vice, but there are other and more indirect methods of using a man's sexuality to his undoing. And by the way, there are not only efficient, but delightful. The unhappiness produced is a very lasting and exquisite kind. Your affectionate uncle, Screwtape. Well, this continuation of the previous letter in which Screwtape was admonishing Wormwood to, to try to find a young woman for this man, his patient, to marry, who would make living the Christian life difficult. This, this is carried over into this letter. And here Screwtape provides more detail. He fleshes out what he's talking about here. He jumps right in by pointing out that across the centuries what satan has done is to to get men to focus on the superficial that in, in particular men uh, are not focusing on what will make a a solid marriage what will provide a, as he describes it for a um, a fruitful and a spiritual uh, growth fertile spiritual ground uh, for a marriage and, and instead to focus on the superficial he everything from the rubenesque to as he described it in the age of jazz was um, from chunky to skinny uh, then you know after that in the 50s and 60s uh, we went back to voluptuous with people like jane mansfield and and uh, marilyn monroe and, and then right back to sticks with twiggy in the late 60s and early 70s so this constant changing and shifting of of what men are chasing after and getting them to chase after that instead of uh, you know maybe that girl next door who doesn't fit all of the current societal ideals um maybe that person would be a good match for marriage uh, particularly in the spiritual uh, realm, and that really is uh, the most important uh, of the aspects that that we should be looking at. Doesn't mean we shouldn't uh, want or even expect uh, some kind of a spark. Uh, of course we do, because that sexual desire is part of what helps us to, you know, to propagate the uh, the uh, species and and fill the planet. Um, that that is an important part of it, but. Screw tape wants uh, Wormwood's patience to focus so much on that, on the external, that that he completely ignores what's truly important. 
and, and is only going after satisfying his lusts. Uh, he talks about how this has been accomplished using uh, the devices of the day, actresses, advertising, and such. Look, it has only exploded in today's world uh, with the, the ready availability of free pornography on the internet. Uh, th this problem is not going to go away anytime soon. It's part of human male nature. And screw tape would like nothing more than to exploit it. And especially our fallen uh, human nature. And, uh, I mean, you know, that's where, you know, obviously through all the letters, you know, uh, screw tape wants to keep us so unfocused on the singular focus of our relationship with Christ and how we live that with others. And, we keep hearing how in different ways that he wants us always to be so superficial. And uh, I was just, uh, as we, as you were talking, just reflecting upon how over the years, um, when a couple would come to the church, to a particular church I'd be at, interested in the sacrament of marriage, as we would refer to that word, or a church wedding, um, which obviously today is getting less and less, and um, even I think even civil marriages are becoming uh, even uh, less and less. But I would, uh, you know, a part of my role would be to get to know the couple a little bit and to try to, you know, help them uh, in as much as I can to bring maybe specific uh, thoughts or uh, spiritual realities, you know, to their mind and heart. Um, my point being is um, I would always ask them and a lot of times separately, you know, what do you, why, what do you like about this person? What, whether it's bride to groom or groom to, buy, to bride and, you know, and I was always hoping to get something meatier, something a little more spiritual. And, and sometimes you would, um, what they really like about this person, uh, but then sometimes, you know, I would just get things like, you know, the female might say, well, he makes me laugh. Um, and I then I would joke back and say, well, then you might want to watch a good comedy or something, because uh, someday you're not going to be laughing. Uh, you're going to be you're going to be yelling and so forth. Um, or uh, and I was in Florida at the time. Uh, so, you know, uh, he, we like to walk on the beach and so forth. And. And those things are all nice, but obviously my goal was to try to get them to go deeper, uh, to go to something of, of purpose, of meaning, and of mission. Because, you know, a part of the reality, and I think we've talked about it before, is, you know, I think sometimes people get married thinking that, you know, it's going to, you know, make me happy. And the point is, it's like, you know, what are you giving? How are you bringing joy to that person how are you bringing meaning to their life through your own your own life and especially how are you going to bring this person uh with your relationship with jesus how are you bringing them to heaven and through your life and uh, through your life with christ so it's uh, and, and at some point, I mean, I, and I don't want to, um, I'll throw it back to yourself, but also that understanding of beauty, maybe we'll touch on that is, you know, that beauty itself. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's wanting to have that deeper relationship with that other person that might deal more with mission and purpose and meaning um, than what we're, a lot of times what we're taught, uh, what we're taught to do. I found it interesting too that that Lewis then goes on to have screw tape describe these these two types of of uh, Venuses, the terrestrial and and the infernal uh, that can be exploited. And uh, the terrestrial, he says, well, not so much because this is the the terrestrial Venus, uh, the earthly is the one that that will make very likely a good spouse it's the the woman who is humble and look this this all get turns around for for women too but being a guy it's just easier to to approach it from our standpoint 
but um but then also the the uh infernal venus uh, who would be the sex pot, the one that he craves physically. He used the Lewis uses uh, screw tape saying brutally um, a, as in as a brute, as an animal, that this is the only thing that he really craves uh, about this woman is her sexuality. He says, uh, you know, have him marry her, too, uh, because then even though the sex is now inside marriage, he is he can be tempted and and pushed into treating her as an object, as a slave, uh, instead of as a marriage partner, and, and and not in the way that certainly that Christ tells husbands uh, through Paul uh, to treat their wives. And this, this can still, even within marriage, then the sex is chased, but the relationship is not. The relationship is ruined, and, and that goes deep into a, a spiritual ruin there. Well, and you mentioned, yeah, the, a chaste heart, um, well, a chaste, uh, the, and it might have been mentioned in a previous uh, discussion of a letter, but a lot of times we might look at that word chaste, not in a, a marital uh, setting, and yet there still is a desire and a need to have a chaste heart within marriage because that chaste heart is ultimately to be uh, to be given to Christ, especially uh, especially for uh, you know uh, for a Christian, and 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 Lewis points out so well uh, with a screw tape, I think, especially in this letter, is to see how the evil one uses any situation, and to be able to know, especially with uh, with uh, with a marriage or with desire for that relationship, is what is at the foundation the most important? Um, and I think for any person, because we we might have uh, we might have some who might not specifically viewers who might not refer to themselves as Christian, and yet uh, to be able to look at what's important for me in a relationship, and it, maybe to work on that. But what's the most important thing? You know, there's a lot of things that somebody might want and desire and you know you want somebody you have a physical attraction to that's uh you know but yet is that the most important thing and to never lose sight once you come to know for yourself what is what is the most important thing in this relationship and either one to continue to discern do i need to work on that more is there something even deeper for those of us who definitely refer to themselves, you know, as Christian, to be able to know from Christ's point of view, what's the most important thing, and to keep that as that foundation once you get to that, because that is what screw tape wants to bring us, distract us, uh, to distract us from. So in summary, we have, um, we have warnings for both the unmarried and the married. Um, for the unmarried, make sure that in seeking a spouse, if in fact you are, that you're prioritizing the things that really are the most important. If you have a spouse, make sure that you are not just objectifying that person, that you are not just, uh, that the relationship is not just a sexual, physical one, that it's not just a uh, a division of duties taking care of the home or or whatever but that there is in fact a spiritual dimension to that that's one of the first things that screw tape warns about is that you know what what we need to do is to make sure that that we distract the humans from what's truly important in the marriage and that is that spiritual dimension so folks hope this gives you a little something to chew on like i said whether you're married or not until next week, light something you like. Enjoy the afternoon.